Good morning, good morning, good morning, y'all. This is day three in Jamaica, and we're finally going diving. My dive watch says I haven't been underwater in 16 days. 16 days. It's time to change that, all right? We're gonna be diving with Garfield Diving Center. I'm not sure where we're going once we get there, what reefs we're gonna hit, but we're sure to find out. I'll ask the dive guide once we get out there where it is that we're heading exactly. Um, they're gonna allow us to spare lop lionfish and catch lobster because we did we were able to keep our pole spears. So let's see what happens. Let's go. Let me take a quick pause to explain. Before traveling to Jamaica, I attempted to find out if bringing the spare guns would be a problem. In my research, I didn't find anything that said no. We had our guns confiscated at the airport. We came in with our guns. We had a big orange. Well, here I sit on my bright orange sports tube in the Sangster International Airport after being told to go to the declarations line. I had also asked a local diver who didn't think it would be an issue, but wasn't 100% sure. I took the chance and was soon informed by the custom agent that the spares were not allowed without an import permit. And so the tube that held the spare guns were taken, but not before I removed the pole spares. They said we need an import permit. And then the number that they gave me just rings and rings and rings. So we'll just get them when we go back. All right, guys, we arrived at the fishing village marina where the cruise ships dock up. We're here at Garfield Diving Center. The boat hasn't come back from its 9 o'clock dive trip yet. So we're just going to chill out. I'm going to show you what the marina looks like before we get on the boat. Everybody throw red fingers to the sky. You're going to rock this one nice and easy. And man, you know what we use for fish for um, lobster stuff? What's you, that? You see that, that little mop you use to clean the floor? Uh -huh. Yeah, you see that? Uh -huh. so you put it in a stick, you, 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 you put it into the hole that they are in, and they get entangled with, oh, with the mop. With the mop. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's okay. A good idea. With the Innovation. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. You put it on a stick, and you. If you see a next time, you have to put it yeah, in yeah, there yeah. and they entangle with it. So when they take it out, yeah, yeah, you're picking them off. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I'd like to see that. Yeah, so you can try it. <laughs> go, go for lobster fishing. Here's the boat coming back in with their guests from this morning. We'll be the only ones on the boat. We got the boat to ourselves. All right, now that the morning divers are back, the captain is preparing the boat for us. Just getting rid of the excess water that's inside the cab. Still out there. Now do you dive? No, free dive. You free dive? You can go 40 feet down natural car. I go up in the river. How far can you go? 40 feet down. Free dive. 40? How long can you stay down for 40 uh, feet? Close to a minute. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we go dive for calm. We should go by the moon, you know. Three days after the moon, three days before the moon. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, but like, it's a business. That go every day, but right. You can't tell people that they're not gonna catch them. Right, <laughs> right, right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But some, uh, some guys do catch in the time when it's not for now, catching. Was your daddy a fisherman too? Yeah, but not for a long. Small, like, like canoes. Okay. You got kids? Yeah, but are they fishermen too? No, no. It's not everyone likes to see, you know? Yeah. Probably ski up the water. Yeah, I get that sea legs. Yeah, right. Yeah. Monitor each other gauge since I might be floating because I might be a little bit careful. Okay. Like Marcel, I'm just gonna give it, I'm gonna just give it a three done. You're gonna be in the water with us or we just doing our thing? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in the water floating above you, but you do your own you do your own thing, take your time and The first dive site is called the Grand Wall. With our Dive Master credentials in hand, Dive Master Casmore allowed us a bit of freedom. After a quick dive site briefing and directional advice, we buddy up and jump in. Thank you. 
At the drop-off point, we are already cruising at 50 feet below, and visibility is great. It looks a bit gloomy, only because the weather changed a bit and the sun is not shining brightly. As instructed, we'll set our compass heading due north in order to find the wall. We run a bit off course and JP finds the first lionfish neatly tucked under a little overhang. Salty locks 1. Jamaica lionfish population, minus 1. The wall is in sight. A wall in scuba terms is essentially an underwater cliff, known more commonly as a reef edge that runs vertically. It can run from shallow to deep and then drop off suddenly into the depths of the ocean. I love diving walls. With the entire reef in front of me instead of beneath me, and the open ocean to my back. It gives a new perspective to the dive and it's fun to find different species in this upside down Alice in Wonderland type scene. Walls tend to be packed with crevices, ledges, overhangs, sea fans and different coral species, all of which make them unique and exciting places to discover and explore. It's pretty deep as you can see. I'm not even halfway down and I'm already at 80 feet. Nice, I've spotted a lionfish at the wall. Double or nothing? Great for when the hunting is heavy, they all quickly get stored into the zookeeper. Once inside, there's no need to worry about the venomous spines and I can quickly move on to the next one in line. Looks like JP has found another one. We find them at different ranges, but I must say they seem to like this depth. There goes Casmore hovering above. And another one. That one put on the ninja moves at the last second and slipped under the rocks. Let's see if I can find it. He's a bit too tiny for the spaced out prongs on this pole spear. You win this round. Since we're in Jamaica, we're diving with air instead of nitrox, so we're running on limited time at this depth. It's time to make my way back up the wall.
Shortly after swimming atop the reef, there's another lionfish hanging out on the open reef. And this one's big enough to catch with ease. Into the zookeeper for safe storage. We've captured six lionfish on this dive. There goes a fish pot down below, marked with two X's. We saw many of these on land at the fishing village and near White River. The local fishermen dropped them and marked their location in order to return and retrieve the fish pot after a few days depending on what they are hoping to capture. The water here is so beautiful and clear. At this point, it's about 25 feet to the reef bottom. The visibility is so good, you can see the reef at the surface. There wasn't a cooler on the boat, so I decided to return underwater with the zookeeper still filled, hoping to run into a few more lionfish. You may notice the fauna swaying back and forth. There is a bit of a surge in this area. What is a surge? A surge is basically the back and forth motions of water caused by wave action. As the wave causes a forward momentum, I kick along. In the resistance, I allow the water to gently pull me back as to avoid exhausting my dive. Once I start feeling a release, I begin kicking, 
just before the search starts again and I get surfed in. This is the epitome of going with the flow. I don't know what happened here, but things are not looking too good for this crab. Just an observation from these two dyes, but there are not much fish in these waters. And what is seen are very young and tiny fish. I would venture to say this area has been overfished. This jack is the biggest fish I have spotted so far, and that's not saying much. This one is probably about seven to nine inches long. Finally, a lionfish. 
He ducked out of there so fast, he must have been training with Usain. Lionfish 2, Salty Lock 6. Here we have a black bar soldier fish with an isopod parasite sitting on top of its head. These fish are often seen with this type of parasite hitching a ride on their brain. But their relationship is commonly misunderstood. The parasite doesn't feed on the skin of the soldier fish, but rather uses the fish as a platform to snag bits of food out of the water column. The parasite digs into the flesh of the soldier fish with its claws in order to stay aboard. It may look painful but causes little more than a flesh wound. If you've been watching my videos, you know how this urchin is supposed to look. Just as the name indicates, this long-spined sea urchin should be covered in long black spines. These aren't looking too good either. I'm no scientist, but by the number of dead urchins, I would say there is some sort of disease in play. When an urchin dies, its spines fall off, exposing the shell beneath, referred to as a test. Sea urchins are very important to the coral reef ecosystem. They help maintain the health of the coral by eating the algae that would otherwise cover the coral, choking it out. This guy looks pretty healthy, but if the surrounding area is any indication, he may not have very long.
This is the skeleton of a sea biscuit and still intact. I wonder if this is the same Jack I saw earlier. Could there be two? The reef hair breaches the surface. The boat must carefully navigate around it. On the way in, we stopped by Dolphin Cove to take a peek at the show. Casmore is now Salty Lock's crew. Now that we're back to port, it's time to remove these spines and clean today's catch. Not a bad day, I would say. I hope you guys enjoyed diving in Ocho Rios, Jamaica. Click on the next video to step into another adventure. Stay salty, my friends.